Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, March 5th. I'm Larry Rhodes or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have a co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, it looks like John had a all right, he got a bottle of water. So good job, man. He water. got a bottle of water. He got a bottle of water. water. <laughs> <laughs> and our guest, as you can hear, is John Richards from England. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. Sure. My, mother, my mother told me to say that. Oh, cool. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, Satanism, and Pastafarianism and the oh, sciences, nice. et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> uh, conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, I guarantee you're just not. In Knoxville, here in the middle of the Bible Belt in Tennessee, we have a group of over a thousand of us. That's just one town. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, well, what's our topic today? What's in an afterlife? And I think it's going to be a good one. But instead of about talking about the afterlife right now, let's talk about how we've been for at least the previous week. Uh, how, we'll catch up on the the week previous. John, how you been since last week? I hope you've been well. Yeah, I've been well. I've been doing my usual mischief. We had a an AUK Atheism UK council meeting this morning. Okay. Online, and we we discussed a number of things because religion is hot news here at the moment. Largely because um, we've got a, a split, imminent split between the two factions of the Anglican Communion, the global Anglican Communion. That's about to happen if it hasn't already, while I've been, you know, closing my eyes. And we've got um, a move to disestablish, to get the, the spiritual lords out of this building. No. Yep. And we've, we've got uh, the, you'll be unhappy to hear that the, uh, the chrism, the oil that's used to anoint the monarch during the coronation, the recipe has been changed. Oh, no. And, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure whether, whether he's been consulted or approves of this, but the thing is that it's no longer containing any animal extracts. So what they've done is they've they've squeezed juices out of plants instead of squeezing them out of animals yeah. to make this oil, and uh, it's it's outrageous. I, I mean, wouldn't think that God would be pleased with that. He loves it, the smell of burning meat. Yeah, was exactly. any of the oil according from to the Bible? Yeah, yeah. 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 was yeah. any of the oil from poison ivy? Because you can you can always like have some really great. Oh, he's the chosen one. That, Let's just gonna show have, it. I'm going to have to ask you to go into what a spiritual lord is. <laughs> well, poison ivy hasn't crossed the Atlantic. We don't have that plant here. Oh, good. interesting. Good. But, but um, we have stinging nettles instead. Okay. But uh, the, the Lord's spiritual, there's 26 of them in the upper house of the Houses of Parliament, the House of Lords. And we don't elect them. They are there of hereditary, no, not hereditary right, but appointment right by the Archbishop of Canterbury. So he's got 26 money. representatives in the House of Lords? Yeah. That yeah. can vote? Oh, that can, they vote? can vote? Yes, they, it's not a policy-making house, but it can modify and uh, reject policies that are created in the Commons. Not good. Not good. Mm -hmm. Also, that's what a weird job. That's basically a no job. You have a no job for life, basically, if you're there. Well, Except that there are only 26 voices in I don't know how many hundreds. So, so that can tip it. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, you know, the way how it shouldn't be a voting block there in the first place is, no. is my main thing. Indeed. And so, That's yeah, right. especially with the cultural, you know, momentum of where England's going, yeah, exactly. it, it's, it's, it's one of those things that. Hey, if we want to evolve a society, let's get rid of these, you know, old hat concepts. And and the, I got twenty six of them I can point out right now. <laughs> Are they Absolutely. making a budget? Are they on a budget? Are they getting paid? Of course. They, well, yeah, they get paid. Yeah, they only get paid if they turn up. 
And oh. the last I heard, but this is some years ago, and it's probably increased, was £300 a day. Um, and there's 778 members of the House of Lords, and there's 26 of them are spiritual members. Wow, wow, wow. It's £300 a day. That's pretty good money. That's at least... You know, yeah, it's 1500 a week if they yeah. work five days a week. Yeah, that's pretty oh. darn good. Gee. Yeah, say, yeah it's, it's not... It only play. It only works. Uh, doesn't work on Fridays, as far as yeah. I'm aware. Get rid of that. Sit. Give the money to homeless. Feed a uh, supporter yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. something way more they don't necessary. call it working. They call it sitting. Uh, and that's probably what they do. <laughs> All right. Except so, when it comes time to vote. Speaking of oils, I got one called Urushiol. I think it's called. It's an oil that is on poison ivy. Guys, spring has arrived at Tennessee. And I know this because I woke up about two weeks ago after this crazy storm that we had. That was the last cold storm that we had in Tennessee. And we had like a immediately followed after a tornado watch, immediately followed after a week of like no sunlight. And then I look at my window and I see two birds fighting. One's drowning the other in like this tiny little puddle that showed up in the storm. It was an Eastern blue bird. They're beautiful birds. And this one is just being aggressively drowning the other one, like on top of it. So I'm on... The second floor of where I live, I go down to the first floor, I go out to that green and I try to shoo them away. They get up and they fly away together. And in my head, my mindset, I realized they weren't fighting. They were just fighting. Sex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that's just well, my own thing. You know, that, that, so like, that is, uh, they're not a type of duck, I, I would gather. No, no, your... no. It was just a that, that is That is normal duck behavior. Oh, yeah. Definitely. In fact, yeah. In, in fact, the, the, the female, the duck, gets piled upon by about four drakes yep. who sub try to submerge her in their efforts. Yeah. yeah, it's they have they have incredibly large members too. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, we're aware, but <laughs> yeah. I've never and seen it with that particular breed of bird before. So, and, and they're corkscrews as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so I was saying, like, a, what happens between consensual birds is fine, but <laughs> if anything. If there's birds out and they're having fun, and if there's bees out and they got the carpenter bees out too, spring has officially come, and I'm super happy about it. So outside, things look great. There's still some remnant storms, so that's why Boudreaux is not be able to be here. But I'm happy that we finally have some good weather. We have a daylight savings time rollover coming up as well. Um, we're going to continue to have them for at least a couple more years because it wasn't uh, a, a band in the house. So. Get used to it, but at least we'll have some sunlight. That's what I'm looking forward to. Larry, how you been? Oh, been fine. Just playing computer games and working. Um, not time quite yet to get my motorcycle out. Not time but quite yet, he says. Okay. Won't won't be long. Good. Be good, good, good. It's been yep. it's been locked up for too long. Uh -huh. Um, so you know, here's a here's a fun conversation that I had while I was on Discord. Um, I was I was talking in a ASL class uh i'm up uh, i i have oh by the way speaking of spring i got hit by poison ivy like the plants are blooming and fresh poison ivy is like the worst got my first blister for the uh oh. the year Reaching you know there out. there are people that aren't allergic to that i used to be them but the problem is it's it's not so much a <laughs> it's not so much a you're not allergic it's just your body hasn't figured out that this is a allergen yet so like you can touch yeah. it there's nothing inherently toxic about the oils yeah, that it, ivy makes. it doesn't seem to affect me right it just takes a while for it just means you're you're a little slower <laughs> at 72 uh, i think i'm yeah. good <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like your body's oh. like ah screw it we got other things to worry about it's good yeah. Uh, the yeah. oil works as a mimicry mimicry molecule for more poisonous stuff. That's all it is. And so uh, it can trick it. It's a bunch. The oil is a boat composed of a bunch of catechols and other alkenes that combine with proteins. And, and those proteins can be triggered or seen as uh, antigen uh, responsible uh, response from the immune system because they'll freak out and think, oh, what the hell is what the heck? Excuse my language. What the heck is on this protein? I need to destroy it. That's all it is. But other than that, it's perfectly, you know, uh, it's just a mimicry molecule at the end of the day. But as, as a result, if you had it once, if you cover yourself in oil once and then wash it off, you'll be fine. If you do it maybe two times or three times a week, totally fine. But after a point, your body's going to figure it out, build that antigen response. And next thing you know, every single time you even brush up against it, you're going to get that really bad reaction. And I had that for like four years or with poison oak, I've had it for the longest time where I've never had a reaction. And I was like, I can get your stick for you. I can get your, your ball for you. And I'll just walk through the bushes, pull it out and be like, I'm Superman. And this is like one of my <laughs> first 
poison ivy blisters and it's like oh no i've been in tennessee <laughs> for too long i've been in tennessee yeah. for too long i've lost my powers yeah. my my uh, it's worked for it's a while probably i'm just not enough of an out, outdoor guy <laughs> <laughs> okay so i uh, had a good conversation with uh, a christian who was part of an asl class that i had a couple of uh, days ago maybe last thursday and he brought up that he has conversations with atheists too does know what an atheist is so we didn't have to go through that fundamental of a conversation but he did bring up a really funny analogy that he brought up where he's like i'm trying to tell atheists about an afterlife and ty i know you don't believe in an afterlife but this is the conversation i typically have with afterlifes like i'll ask an atheist well where do you think you're going to go when you die and the atheist will always look at me confused me the christian confused and they'll be like i don't know where i'll go but here's another question what color will you paint your house after it burns down and then in my head i'm like yes exactly and then he says and don't you see why atheists just don't get it and i'm like don't you see that was a great analogy that that guy just gave you if you have to die before you get to paradise doesn't that doesn't that strike you as an interesting clause of concern for any sort of contract where it's like hey by the way you'll die but i'll give you a lamborghini afterwards it's like who cares who cares what, what what's going on here and so what I want to talk about today was that nature of the afterlife and why we call it an afterlife and not an after death. I'd like yeah, to yeah, yeah, exactly. get that upset. Yeah. John, what do you yeah. think? Well, you're absolutely right. It's misnamed, isn't it? It's mm. the same. It's the same with the anti-abortionists who refer to we don't want to kill babies. Well, they're not babies yet. They're fetuses. They only become babies after birth. And some of them don't survive. So you can't start calling them babies prematurely. And it's the same with afterlife. It's, as you say correctly, it's after death. Right. There's no, there's no life about it. Get that, it real. that euphemism won't catch on as uh, as well, I, I think. I feel like you have to focus on the life concept. But like, well, if yeah. you're already living, how can you have an afterlife? Think about that. So like, if I'm already alive, what do you mean by afterlife? It's like, after this life, then you get the next life. Well, what happens in between? There seems to be like a very important thing that's going on between there. Larry Rhodes, do you have a poet? You have a comment on this before we delve into the idea? Well, you know, it's as according to Christianity, you go directly to heaven. It's the same life. You don't really die. You you uh, you just change addresses. I mean, how can you respect the 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 fact that our life comes to an end if you don't believe there's ever an end? And I mean, what do you plan to do to celebrate your one trillionth birthday? You know, Listen after you've learned John every Mayer musical album again. instrument and, and <laughs> painted every kind of art, huh? Yeah, like you're right. Like In my opinion, there could be, if I am who I am now, if I am who I am now, I'm not built to live for an eternity because I'm going to get bored. And there's only so many things that I'm capable of doing. And suicide is not a... Oh, oh an that'd option. Be, yeah. Like yeah. I would, like I get to meet my family. It's like that's great. I'm tired of meeting them. I met them for the last yeah. four billion years, and that wouldn't I, work for some people. <laughs> it wouldn't work for me <laughs> so much either. I'd be like, okay, that's not there. really a carrot to some yeah. people. Like there are some guys, for example, who I know live in Alaska, who are just like, hey, I had a life in the states, but I decided to list live out in the middle of nowhere, build my own cabin, and just like eat porridge and hunt for the rest of my life like he couldn't even do that forever they'd get bored of that too but there's like a mindset of there's only so much that you can do and i do feel like boredom is like one of the most scariest things that we do experience along with fear what do you think larry was he gonna hunt do was animals he gonna hunt? go to heaven do they oh, create like, animals just for us to hunt you yeah know, what's up there nobody knows and every religion says something different and it, matter of fact, every preacher says something different. If you ask a preacher, uh, will I be able to do this in heaven? The answer will probably be yes. You know, and so if you they like just it. create it as they go. Yeah, if you like it. Because if, if, I mean, if you're gay and you want to go to heaven, they'll be like, can I have sex with my partner? It's like, uh, it's more complicated, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, and the other thing is, if you go to heaven and people you love or some of the people you love are in hell and you know about it, right? how can you possibly be happy in heaven? Right. You know, you, they would have to change who you are right? To, for you to be happy. You know, remove the, 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 the biggest happiness given thing in your life, your children from your, let's say that 
if I went to hell because right. I'm an atheist and my mother's right, right, right. in heaven, sure. you know, how could she possibly be, be the person she was if they take her memories of her children away from her? Exactly. Exactly. I have a, a weird story about this too. Once I was in uh, Virginia and we went to a uh, Mexican restaurant and the guy there didn't want to shake our hands or touch, her, touch us because we had like a vibe that you might have been racist. And so it colored the entire time that we were in the restaurant. And that was like years ago. And now every single time my mom brings up the state of Virginia, she brings up that incident. Like, hey, remember that time in Virginia when that guy didn't want to touch your hands at that Mexican restaurant? But the immediate follow-up sentence is, yeah, so I went back to that Mexican restaurant and the food was so good. Remember the store, the guy where they didn't want to shake your hands? Yeah, I went back there again last week. It was so great. Yeah, the food's I was like, in my head, it's like, mom, why do you keep going back to that store? If, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> why do you keep supporting that store? If we had such like a terrible experience there from the waiting staff. And in my head, it's the same idea of like, if how can you enjoy heaven if you know that there's like this hair in the soup of the people that you do love but weren't good enough to make it to where you're at are suffering in in all of eternity right now maybe it's right. just maybe it's the thing that people don't think about it's the 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 lack of empathy for that you know brief moment in time where people don't think about the the fine are people more concerned with having the the sense of closure or the security of knowing that they won't die for actual for real and not so much the empathetic impact that it has on the wherewithal and well-being of other people that are around them. And that's the scary thing that religion can do, too. It can cloud people's empathy. John, it sounds like you had a point. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've opened a can of worms here, oh. guys, because if, if you're in heaven, yet you know that your friends are in hell, mm. the question arises, how do you know that? Is there some special... Out of communication speaking tube. <laughs> I think it'd be like if you look around, uh, right? How are you like, doing, bro? <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, where's Jake? And you can't find him. And you're like, oh, I, I literally spent all of eternity looking for Jake. This is kind of concerning. I can't be concerned. I'm in heaven. I have to be happy. Where's Jake? Oh, he's not here. Well, I I don't know how I feel about that. That's and, I and would, if you do, if if you do know what's going on down there in hell. Is there any other special information you have access to? Like right. you know, the future? Ooh. Yeah, it would seem it would seem weird to me that people in heaven would be okay with there being hell and wouldn't want to spend more of their time in hell trying to get the people out of it. Like mm -hmm. it seemed it seemed like hell heaven would have to there's a there's a movie that exists that um uh Steve Carell auditioned for, but it, he didn't get the part. And, mm -hmm. and he now he's like a famous actor, but the idea would be like heavens only has enough room for one person because it can only be perfect for heaven is perfect, but it can only be perfect for one person because everyone's experiences are subjective. And so heaven yeah. exists as like a lazy boy chair that you can sit in <laughs> that has like this perfect massage settings and you just sit and you're like, oh, this is pretty. Oh, yeah, this is wonderful. But you can't recognize that anyone else around you is suffering in hell because you're the only person in heaven. And so. Yeah uh once you realize that you have to get out of the chair <laughs> you have to leave and another person has to come in and enjoy the chair for you because it can oh, only, so it's, it's only one at a time it's so only I one at a time only one person can fit because like in, hey in, it's perfect for you once it's not perfect for you we have to get the next guy in in that movie how did you qualify to to be the is there a cue i don't know i don't know <laughs> i didn't get that far but I, I enjoyed it it was a nice it was a nice student film anyway I want to go into the different kinds of afterlife real quick. Maybe we get some feedback. I know we touched on the Christian version of the afterlife. I asked ChatGPT, which is a fairly neutral party in this conversation, what are 10 different kinds of afterlife? And then mm. also, what are themes that are common around them? I'd like for us to explore those themes. But for first, mm. Christian afterlife. In Christianity, the afterlife is divided into heaven, where the righteous go, and hell, where the wicked go. But... Mm. In the Islamic afterlife, the afterlife is divided into paradise, where the righteous go, and hell, where the wicked go. And if you go through uh, Norse mythology, Egyptian mythology, Roman mythology, Greek mythology, every single one seems to be, for example, in Greek mythology, afterlife is divided into two realms, the Elysian fields where the heroes and virtuous people go, and the underworld where the wicked people go. Roman afterlife, 
similar to the Greek afterlife, you have the call, the place called the fields of Asphodel where ordinary mm. people go. And then you also have the bad place, the underworld, where the bad people go. Egyptian, Osiris decides whether you go to the good afterlife or the bad afterlife. It makes a judgment on you. Hindu mm. has reincarnation, but they have a karma structure system to determine uh, whether you go up or down. And right. I think Jewish people don't care so much about the afterlife. It's not a major focus of the religion. But there is some commonality with a lot of these spiritual beliefs that there is a judgment and a place you go after you die. Hey, what's up, Larry? What's up? Well, Mormonism, uh, you don't have a bad place. I understand you have different levels of heaven. You know, sure. So if you're really, really good and you support the church and all this other good stuff, you go to a higher level. Uh, but I wanted to correct a, mis a misconception uh, that you started with, that in Christianity, uh, good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. Uh, good no, question. Good question. No. Uh, no, believers go to heaven. Yeah. Non-believers go to hell. It doesn't yeah. matter how good they are. It right. does not. They sell morality. They sell the fact that they have morality and that they have the best morality. But morality does not enter into it at all. Well said, well said. It, there are stipulations and an asterisk on the word righteous to go to heaven. And right. uh, it's a lot more than you would think it would be. Um, Jeffrey Dahmer and Hitler are, are in heaven, according to their theology. Yeah, yeah, because they believed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So which religion is it that has, that when you die, you get a whole planet? Which one is that? Mormonism. Mormon. Mormonism. Whoa. Yeah. And, and I can be honest with you. If someone, if I went to the afterlife and Mormons are like, there's no such thing as a bad afterlife, but they all have planets and I don't, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I got, I got, I got, uh, swindled. I'd be like, ah, uh, no, 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 I don't know. I don't yeah. believe this. Well, it's, it's there's not no that bad they afterlife. Just, you have a yeah. planet. It's <laughs> not that they just get a planet. I mean, they could give you a planet tomorrow and you wander around being bored for the rest of your life. No, they get to be a God over right. a planet. Right. Yeah, but which which sort of planet is is this Mercury or Jupiter? <laughs> if it's Venus, you're in trouble because there's yeah. nothing there but oh. acid acid rain. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty metal up in Venus. I can say this too. Um, if a planet, even if it was just like a dead rock planet, compared yeah. to an Applebee's coupon, if I had to screw this between the uh -huh. two. <laughs> right. I almost still got over a lifeless planet in the middle of the void of dark space. Yeah. Hey, you could create flood. volcanoes. You could oh, flood can you it. make stuff? Okay, are you all right? All right, all right. If you can make stuff, that sounds pretty fun. It's a show the it acts can't... of God. Yeah. If, if we a... had a choice, mm. if we had a choice, I, I would think Mercury is a bit toasty. Um, okay. Venus, the, the rain is acid. Don't like Venus. It's actually hotter it... on Venus, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but um, and, and Mars is a bit cold, and then you get mm. into the gas planet, so nowhere to stand, even mm. though the ground is crushing. But um, they have lots of moons out there. You can stand. They got lots of moons. They but got it's a lot, lot colder than I Mars. Promised a planet, not a moon. <laughs> <laughs> Pluto. You I have get a Pluto. Pluto. <laughs> Pluto's not a Pluto's not a planet. No. Okay. okay so, given funny. a choice, I mean, I don't know whether we have a choice, but the mm. planet I want to end up with when I die is Earth. <laughs> right. Right. In a different right. dimension, so everybody gets an Earth in a different dimension, right? I'd still. Does so that mean that. our uh, the Chris the Mormon God is a ex Mormon because you know there's a God of Earth, right? Ooh. Yeah. Exactly. And also, what do you exactly do? as a god of a planet not to get too much into the mormon belief system but like what is your job do you just apparently you like, knock up versions yep <laughs> yep physics okay yeah all right okay that's, that's only only if you're a bloke though of course sure 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. like you could you could you could watch sports games i guess but like for the most part it's going to be for the vast majority of your existence i mean it's going to be quite boring Unless if God made sports just for entertainment, like I don't know how where we go with that. Yeah. And, and anyway, would, would we would we be forced to learn how to play the harp? That is, yeah. The idea is, you know, why do you care about what you paint your house after it's burned down? Um, if you have to die to enjoy these things, what does that tell you about the thing that you're trying to enjoy? Because once you die, you have to consider that you might lose the most important thing that you yeah. have which is you and and none of these afterlives that i'm reading seem to have uh a lot in answering that particular thing what's up larry well i was just going to say that 
since all religions um, sell you some kind of afterlife as a hope mm. uh, for it to continue your living after you die, and uh, all the religions say that uh, the one thing that atheism can't give you is hope because we don't believe in an afterlife. Well, that's true. We can't give you hope, but there's no reason you can't have hope. Right. In other words, if you want to have hope for an afterlife, go ahead. Nobody's stopping you. We're not sure. stopping you. And yeah. I personally would make up an afterlife to hope in that doesn't involve a hell. Right. Personally. It, it seems as if religion or these ideas of the afterlife are no different than my calamine lotion that I use for my poison ivy. It's not a cure for the poison ivy. It's not going to magically get rid of the mm -hmm. blister, but it does provide an anti-itch soothing <laughs> sensation on the blister. So I don't scratch it as much, but it doesn't. Be honest, it, right. Be honest, be honest, Ty, you wanted to turn your skin pink. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad color. It's not a bad color. So I'm saying, uh, it we have basically a band-aid put on the idea of fear but if we or can death. yeah and a fear of death fear of the unknown however if we were to try to you know evolve our society so we would come to terms with that much more early and realize that like no one really wants to live forever as they are like that's also a bad thing too so try to have an enjoyable uh rewarding life in your present moment then maybe you can get yourself to a position where you can be happy that you died without regrets more so oh. than that you'll die at all and with the anticipation of going to an afterlife i find like that la the former is way better than the latter and well i've got something that's even better it? and it's what woody allen when he was asked what he wanted written on his tombstone he replied he didn't die okay <laughs> Woody Allen always an interesting character for me. We're interesting yeah. thing people, person people yeah. still bring up. Yeah, but we, yeah, I think we, we're at the bottom of the half hour. How about that? Let's yeah. take a break and we'll come back. When we come back, we'll do uh, themes from the different afterlives and then some listener questions. All right. Be sure, be sure to stick around for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be back right after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Daughter Five, or Larry Rhodes, <laughs> and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. And make sure ASK. we're recording. And make sure we're recording too, right? And make sure we're recording. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year and have over 1,000 members. We have weekly meetings in person every Tuesday evening at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom ASK meeting. If you'd like to join us on Zoom, e email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can also find us online on Facebook or meetup.com or go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Yeah. Don't find one. Start, Start one. one. Right. Yeah. Well, back. where do you want to pick up? All right. So uh, we just talked about some religions and quick passing, as well as the idea of the afterlife. And uh, the theme of today's show is what's in an afterlife? doesn't seem to be particularly appealing, but that's because we're coming at it from the perspective of one, an organic atheist by John Richards, like born an atheist, never indoctrinated into the fold. And as separate as he was, looks at the idea of an afterlife and thinks, why would you even bother? Like, what is this? Larry, you have an interesting perspective on the afterlife. It's not just, hey, I have a way for you to, and I have the similar one. It's not just a way to stop worrying about the death and and have some security about the continuation of your life. It also comes with a bunch of baggage. Of oh, it does, religion. especially Christianity. Guilt, um, uh, being yeah. a sinner, talk about it. Uh -huh. It Well, it's not enough that you just believe. I mean, they sell you this baggage that you're a born sinner, that right. you're flawed from birth, that you inherited right. sin from the first humans that ever lived, and that oh. you have to spend the rest of your life apologizing for being human 
and carry the guilt of all the preceding humans that have sinned along with you. Right. Um, you are a bad person from the time you're born until the time yeah. you die. And the only thing that can save you is believing as they do. Yeah. And the problem is, and another problem, I mean, that's a huge problem. But once you start getting into the mind frame that your belief has now exempted you from all that sin, you are now better than everybody else on the yeah. world. And your hypocrisy right. uh, mm -hmm. of, of, I mean, the, the sheer uh, hubris mm -hmm. and self-righteousness mm -hmm. of that type of belief carries on in your life and makes, ends up making you a bad person. Yeah, I mean, it's dangerous. Which is the opposite is. of what they're supposed to be doing. Absolutely. Yeah. The interesting thing here is that before you were born, where were you? I mean, that's an equally valid question to after you're dead, where do you go? Yeah, Mark because... Twain uh, asked the same question. Yeah, yeah, he said, he, I, I, something what? I was dead for billions of years before I was born, and I will be yeah. dead after I lie. I, and it did not inconvenience me in the least, is what he said. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> I didn't mind not being alive before yeah. I was born. It was painless yeah. enough. Yes. Yeah. So, but, um, but the Christian way says that not only were you in this um, non-existence before you were born, but it was a bad place because you, when you were born, you brought all this guilt and sin that you, you know, somehow accrued on the way down the birth canal <laughs> right. mm -hmm. yeah. but it's also some one of those own moan motivating factors because the more christianity can swell someone's ego to make them think they're more and more special the harder yeah. it is for them to realize that that can end one day right mm -hmm. because now i'm i'm the creator of the universe is my best friend i'm gonna live forever i'm better than every other person that's on the planet that doesn't think the way how i think but Ooh. now I have to give all of that up to to come to terms with secularism and humanity and all that. Like, no, thank you. I will live with my delusions. It seems like it's one of those things that can make, uh, like, it's like having a toxic friend that just keeps giving really bad advice, but it sounds good in the moment, but long-term only sets yeah. you up for more and more failure. And the odd thing about this is the Christians, which you've explained, have all this hubris because they're special. Mm-hmm. Mm they're the ones that accuse us of of not being um, humble. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Because ego <laughs> right. doesn't like other ego, right? Or yeah. all problems seem to be coming from, you're attacking my ego, therefore you're the problem. Arrogance. They, they blame us for being arrogant because we don't believe the way they do. Yes. And they, they say the sheer arrogance of an atheist not to believe in God. But when you think about it, which is more arrogant, saying, I don't know if there's a God out there, but I don't believe any, yeah. or believing that God is your close personal friend who killed his own son for you and right. will do anything that you ask him in prayer, which and is more arrogant. Yeah. And also think about it like this. A lot of atheists aren't saying we don't believe in your God. We're saying we don't believe you when you say you have a God or yes. that a God exists. You right. need to be or any other evidence. creature yeah. on the planet or any we'll say that to anybody else. We don't believe mm -hmm. the person who says that a God exists. Maybe mm -hmm. that, that God exists. We don't care. That's not even a, 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 a option for consideration at that point. It's the person who's making the claim that we have to like look at first. Right. So and Christian the follow up says, question from them would be why? And of course, the answer is there's no evidence. It's just stories. They're just trying to claim something and then yeah. claim that it's true. And, and I would say, and I would say, you do have evidence, but it hasn't met the extraordinary nature of the claim. The evidence right. that you're pointing at is just a book of claims or an experience that you have, all of which are inherently subjective, and we are subjective beings. But you are objectively describing something that impacts my universe, everything about reality. And I don't understand where you get the frame of reference to be able to pull that out. You're going to need more than a book to, to establish that. Right. 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 You, can't, you can't put them off their stride by asking them which God, because they then, because they, they assume they've got the only true one. Right. And so, so they then accuse you of, um, of being disrespectful towards the one and only God. So there is something interesting because they might bring this up and I'd love to hear this. Well, then if my God isn't true, how is it that, um, or if my idea of the afterlife isn't true, how is it that cultures from across centuries and globally separated from each other have all come up 
with more or less the same concept of a continuation of life where the evil will be judged and the good will be rewarded for their actions on this earth. Like, how is that the case that separated globally and from centuries apart that these different kinds of cultures can come together? And so, yeah. what I, oh, John, it sounded like you had a comment? Well, I had an interesting conversation last night in Free Thought Hour with my okay. co-host, Tercia Duplessy, because we had a guest on whose uh, who's name is uh, Bryce Cornell. He's, um, he's in Philadelphia at the moment, not too far away from you guys. And he, he's an ex, he's a veteran of the US Air Force. A, a, he identifies as black. And he, he was saying that um, he, uh, he, he was a, an, a Christian originally, but he lost his faith by reading the Bible. Okay. <laughs> which is, which a lot is commonly of people do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes, indeed. It's commonly the way that that happens. But we were talking about um, afterlife with him. And I'd like you to watch the show. <laughs> it's really good. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so the idea would be, um, why is it that these differently separated, both in time and physical location cultures, come up with the same concepts about the afterlife and so i asked chat gpt who's sort of like our uh, third party neutral uh advocate and and uh what do you why do these different religions all seem to have similar themes across the different afterlives and so chat gpt, GPT said hey firstly it's important to recognize that these beliefs and mythologies often arose in response to universal human concerns and experiences and I thought that is the nail on the hammer, right? Because, for example, the fear of death and the desire of some form of continuation after death are all common to humans regardless of their cultural or historical context. And as such, it's not surprising that many different religions and mythologies have developed similar themes and beliefs regarding the afterlife. And so if you are, you know, in a tribe in the Amazon or in a castle in medieval England, you are noticing that people that you love might be dying around you and you realize you're a person too and you need to come up with a way to like rationalize that in order to maintain some sort of degree of sanity if you, if you don't want to come to terms with it. And some cultures may have like, you know, recognized and, and dealt with it in different ways, but there is that discomfort of the unknown. And so- It's, it's probably, the only, probably the only common thing between religions. Hmm. <clears throat> because again, with, with Bryce last night, we were talking about because he's been in the military we were talking about travel and he left his little um, local parochial area where he was raised into christianity and discovered as he went to different countries with the military there are other religions you know there are other people with other beliefs and that what made him challenge himself as to why he happened to have been born into the right one because he could have been born in Iran, you know, right. in which case you would have been a Muslim with an entirely different sort of afterlife to look forward to. Right, <laughs> right, right. So, you know, this commonality that we see isn't justification that it's actually true. It's more speaking about something more fundamental with the human condition, in my opinion, which it's is wishful thinkianity. It's wishful thinkianity. And when you have a common fear among all these different cultures, right, even if the individual basis, some people may come to terms with it, that's it's going to show a common salve for that fear which is these afterlives which are colored based on what each culture has around them it's why egyptians have hippo gods and why romans have gods that were togas and you go to each place and it's like oh black gods are in africa the the white gods are over here and where white people are yeah this this seems to be uh geographically tied to each other larry what do you think well, true. Uh, I certainly believe that. Um, the, all the way talking about where, you know, people not knowing the answers and starting to come up with answers. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all well and good, but it, it, that alone doesn't explain the priest class. The We're priest. talking about a class of people who took those beliefs, you know, even rudimentary as they were, and then ran with them to be yeah. able to gain more power in right. their society. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. To be able to interpret what the god wants when yeah. you know all all around them are just questions it's, and and of course they capitalized off that so okay. it's marketing and war really why certain religions have just become dom- uh, dominated with certain very popular ideas right but mm-hmm. the well, religion 
I think like like Larry, I think it's an opportunity to earn off the vulnerabilities of the rest of the population. They are yeah. con men. The ignorance and the superstition of yeah. the rest of the population, That's especially back on. then. Right. Yeah. And it was so, still going on. But if you also think about it, like if you had, for example, humanism, Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism, Jainism, like these are all atheistic religions where there's no central deity. Uh, oh. They also don't immediately resolve the, well, I'm afraid of dying question. How do you how do you fix that? Whereas if you go to the other side, it's like a junk food aisle while you're about to check out from a grocery store. And they're like, afterlife, now with 1000% more calories for assuaging your fear of death. And you're like, oh, that's exactly what I'm afraid of. I might pull a little bit mm -hmm. of that from that rack and like check out with that instead of the the more healthy grocery foods items in the background. But there's also another problem, Larry, that I was, I was touching on before. Um, it's not just that Christianity tries to... Uh, enforce a structure it tries to actively make the one life that we may actually have the one that we are experiencing right now worse by yeah, virtue devalue of, it yeah, yeah by yeah. virtue of devaluing it by virtue of not letting you fully express yourself or taking away things that might actually be you know good experiences for you bacon for one i don't know like it's pretty awesome but there's a bunch of other <laughs> stuff that they like to get their fingers in to control yeah. with a sense of paranoia every waking hour of your life how much yeah, time do right. Muslims spend praying that they could be doing more stuff well, that they would enjoy? You know, think, right. think of the holy men in most most societies. I mean, they they cloister themselves away with a book mm. for most of their lives doing menial tasks. Right. Uh, which is, if you choose to do that, that's fine. It's your choice. But think about what they could have done and accomplished and experienced had they not uh, bought into this superstitious uh, structure. Right. Uh, There's mm. religious... Yeah. For, for one half hour a week, maybe two times a week, I would be in school learning some new field of science. And it would be like physics or chemistry. And I'd do, be doing it back to back with other classes, but only be like an hour a week, more or less, because it was just two half hour classes. But after the end of like a four year block, I became very good or well versed in a particular area of science just due to that repeated checking in. I learn languages that way. I learn how to interact with a lot of different people and explain things and model them in a really interesting way that I can now use as part of like my career. And if, if I have, go oh, go for if it. You don't, if you don't keep reiterating, you'll lose it. It's like exactly. I I used to play the guitar. I can't now. It was forty years ago. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so very Ooh. interesting. Yes. So if I were to have, you know, that Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning back. If I had a lifetime of Sunday mornings back to me, what could I do with that time, particularly in like my later age or, you know, the times that I could have spent praying when I stopped praying? That was that was a very hard period of time for me because that happened to me when I was in college, because I had this neurotic relationship with God, where if I had done anything bad, I would just do prayers in my head over and over again because it made me feel whole. But when I realized I didn't have the spiritual fortitude to maintain that prayer i just decided to stop and it was this weird gap where i realized there's silence in my head <laughs> uh -huh. i'd never really had a yeah. chance to appreciate before yeah, it's hard like, to break that conditioning yeah like like once the conditioning was like broken down and i just had time to think about like i did something bad let me rationalize what i need to do oh let me just apologize to this person and just silence immediately afterwards and i'm like Oh, I'm just going to mm -hmm. do that. That's so much easier. Yeah. Now I have more, more time to think about more of the cool things. Yeah, um, shut that one down. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wonder, the energy I could have back is just amazing. For, for me, as a lifelong atheist who looks at other people in various religions, like I look at zoo animals in a cage. Sure. Christianity yeah. seems to me to be the most evil of the religions because think what it does. It starts by destroying your self-esteem, by telling you that you're born sinful and are uh -huh. worthless until you've adopted their control freakery. Then later on, it tells you that uh, real life isn't, isn't cracked up too much because the afterlife is going to be so much better. So it's devaluing your existence today. And after you've had a few years of this, suicide or, or martyrdom seems quite a reasonable option because then you get mm. there quicker yeah and you're you're speaking of this as a male can you imagine how much worse it is for a female yeah in, in many I of can't. these religious societies because religions are male chauvinists exactly uh, they're, yes. they're yes. Yeah. yeah well if, you, oh. if you're asking me to imagine i'm a woman it's not going to work 
no but like uh-huh. i think the fact that we can't should also we can't but we can also recognize how much that would suck like i can't know it like how they would know it but i can recognize that that is a terrible situation to be in and all yes. the more reason why we need to pull ourselves out of it i always yes. said that the last not the last but the next big step for humanity is the age of new reasoning the reasoning age that we can get into and it requires people to start to remove these dogmas from their lives start interacting with each other on a global basis and realize all these weird stipulations these arbitrary lines of separation that we put up across each other don't really exist and we have far more in common let's work on these goals together mm-hmm. and and and, right. and do so with the best models of knowledge that we have available and hopefully we can get to a higher standard of life for everybody rather than this us versus them mentality we can we, i want us to be able to see through as soon as someone tries it and realize our leadership doesn't need to do that in order to control us anymore we can be molded by good leadership that's interested in our own interests rather than you know making us fight against each other so that they can uh pick up whatever scraps or smoke comes out of it so yeah and yeah go ahead i don't know in 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 a takeoff on an old cartoon if atheism isn't real and we make a what if we make a better world for nothing (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's a great point what if we made a better world for nothing yeah it's true so uh to my my christian friend who brought up the example of the um house what what color would you paint your house after it burns down um better luck in the future i hope you understand where we're coming from by that because i do think that's a good analogy i do think that's fair and yeah. the idea is like there's not much to an afterlife if you got to die for it right after i die i don't care anymore so let's do what we can with the current life we got because we can all agree we're experiencing that and there's some measures that we can take to make sure that this life is good and as larry says what if we made the world good for nothing it's like uh, better for nothing it's like that's the reason why we want to make this world better um for nothing for us yeah. right anyway I'm john just, i'm just wondering how once your house is burned down and, and it's all black and ashes i mean how are you going to paint it exactly right and what if all the ashes like swip away in the dust is now transcendental yeah. paint that we need do we need trend yeah. we need paint that goes to a higher plane would that, uh, would that make spray your paint. Con- you spray it <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> Would, would that help your correspondent to get the point, do you think, if he actually thought about how he's going to do the painting? I think thinking is the problem. I think thinking is the yeah. problem, but we need to get that right. Ego and thinking. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff there. Uh, John Richards, where can we find your stuff at? Free Thought channel on YouTube. And there's lots of lovely stuff on there. I've recently started doing Global Atheist News in three bits. So we have... Uh, so, so throughout the week, instead of just having one compilation at the end, I do a little bit of news in the beginning. It's probably on Wednesday. I do a bit more on Thursday. And then I do a bit on Saturday, which I stick together in a roundup of all the news of the week. So you've got more globally atheist news, but shorter. Nice. Cool. And Larry, before I sign out, I just want to say on Let's Chat. Thank you guys for... Oh, no, we did have that one quick question from Discord. I want to throw this one up at... Sure. Uh, Go for to it. to uh, uh, John Richards, you're right. You're right. Sorry, guys. John Richards, I have a question from our Discord channel. This one came from Anonymous. He'd been waiting two weeks for this answer. Um, I'm just curious where you guys are getting your information that America is becoming less religious. From my experience, I'm seeing more people join churches, more advertisement mm. for churches, and progressively mm. more religious-based politics. Seems like mm. religion is still a big part of American life. Oh, definitely. But it's it's. Uh they're they're fighting back because it's it's weakening it's mm. they're they're in their death throes and they're trying to make it as hard as possible i'm sorry go ahead john john well, I, I can i don't know the details of the u.s situation but i can tell you that in england and wales we had a census a couple of years ago and it's revealed that only uh 42 46.2 percent have described themselves as christian which is down from 10 years before that when it was 59.3 percent so that's yeah 10 percent drop in uh yeah in 10 years right. and polls the answer is polls uh, uh, uh. well yeah but but census is a bit different from a poll right it's, true people tend to answer it more seriously mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep <clears throat> and it gets gets everyone whereas the poll is just a thousand people right and uh um... if you want to if you want to talk polls they also show that the decline is it is a trend and that the 
increase in nuns is right. huge. <clears throat> Right. right. And, it, and it's it, been it, shrinking it. for a while, for decades, in fact. So, I mean, I mean, imagine when it was first founded to like where we are now. It's massive. But like every steady decade, we see less and less right. people identifying as Christians. That's yep. a good thing. Uh, okay. Sorry for that. Uh, Larry, go ahead and take us out. <laughs> sure. Uh, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. You can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. And my YouTube channel handle is at Doubter5. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind like Ty did when he stopped praying, yeah. you can get help from recoveringfromreligion.org. Go yeah. there and find it um, if you want to, of course. Uh, remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye. 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 -bye. Everybody.